G'day folks and welcome back. So this is another one on talking about some of the dangers in our industry and what we're going to look at this afternoon is what are some of the biggest causes of crane failures or cranes going over in industry. So I'm going to do these in no particular order but what I'm going to start with is what we all going to start with when we're on site and that's about setting up the crane. Now, one of the biggest reasons crane will go over is due to a poor setup. Now, whether that setup is because you've taken shortcuts, whether it's because you haven't pinned your outriggers, you haven't identified the underground services, or you haven't looked at the ground conditions themselves. Whenever you're setting up a crane, these are all pretty important things that you need to be able to do. So before you even go to the um, bother of setting up, you want to have a good look around. You want to have a look at what is your ground conditions like? If it does look a little bit dodgy, get some bigger pads, get some bigger timbers. Make sure you have plenty of support for the weights that you're going to be applied. Because not, don't forget, it doesn't have to support just the weight of the crane, but also the weight of the load that you're going to have hanging on as well. Because they're all going to be down on those four outriggers. So that's number one, is make sure you have a good look at the ground conditions themselves. Have a look around, look for any signs of any underground services. Ring up the authorities, get the plans, make sure you've got nothing hidden under the ground there. Not everything is always shown on the plan, unfortunately. So have a look around. If there's a tap there, there's obviously a pipe going somewhere. If you see a grate over there, there could be a pipeline underneath you or some form of electrical services. So look around, make sure you look for everything in the area. Now also when you're setting up, also do the simple things like pinning your outriggers. Don't forget to pin your outriggers. If you have a look at a lot of the uh, photos and videos online of cranes going over, you'll notice that on the side they're laying on, the outriggers have been pushed right in. Now that's because as you're getting close to your limit, it's going to start taking a little bit of sideways force on it. If your pins aren't in there to hold it as they're supposed to be, they're going to start sliding in. So for the 30 seconds or a minute it takes to walk around and just put a pin in each outrigger, just do it, all right? It can save you, can save your dogman, can save anyone in the area. Don't be lazy. Walk around and pin your outriggers. All right, so it's very important that you set it up correctly. Just follow all the manufacturer's instructions. Make sure that crane is set up correctly. All right. Now, as I said, these are in no particular order in how I'm going through them. But one of the next things I'm going to look at is just poor maintenance on the crane. Make sure you always do your daily checks on the crane. Walk around, look for any faults. If you find any faults, make sure you put it in the logbook to make any other ne the next operator aware of what is going on with it. Report it, don't just write it in the logbook either. Let the office know. If they don't know something's happened or something's wrong with the crane, they can't fix it. If it is something that is going to make it unsafe to operate, don't operate it. Now, when you're walking around it, look at some of the simple things. If you're in a tower crane, as you're climbing the tower, have a look at all those connections. Have a look at things like your hand bone or your wedge and socket on the rope. Make sure that's not starting to come undone. All right. With your wedge and socket, you should have a bulldog clamp on it that's sitting just off the hand bone. Make sure that's not hard up against hand bone, because if it is, it's giving signs that your rope is slipping. So make sure you check that. Make sure you look for any oil leaks. Make sure you look for any damage to the boom itself or any other structural part of the crane. Make sure you do a thorough inspection and make sure all the services are up to date as well. Check all your certs. Make sure that your ropes are good. Make sure your inspection is thorough because at the end of the day, you don't want to have a crane go over because something that you should have seen in your pre-start. So make sure you do walk around it properly. Make sure everything's up to date. Any issues, make sure you do put it in the logbook. If it makes it unsafe to operate, make sure you tag the machine out. So tag it out, put it in the logbook and make sure you tell your supervisor so they can get onto that straight away. Don't get fooled into believing, oh, she'll be right for the day, we'll get it fixed next week. Because we don't know if that's going to last until next week. All right. 
Now, the next one I'm going to look at is overloading. Now, overloading can be deliberate or it could be accidental. Hopefully, it's never deliberate. If it's deliberate, you shouldn't be driving that crane. But you can also overload it accidentally, especially when you're doing things like demolition work or you may be even rolling an item and that can shock load the system as well. So you've got to be aware of that. We used to quite often roll these 90 ton drag line buckets using a 200 ton crane. Now, while the crane was good for it in that position, it always got to that sort of pivot point where it would just sort of give that little jolt at the end and that would um, give it a quick sudden shock load. So always be aware of what you're doing and what can happen with it. If you are doing demolition and you've got a hold of something and they cut it away, make sure you've got that weight on it so when they cut it away, it doesn't drop into the slings. Always be aware of what you're lifting and have a good idea of what it's going to be. Now, if you're overloading it deliberately, get out of the crane. You don't belong in it. You're a cowboy. You shouldn't be anywhere near that machine. Now, another major cause of crane accidents, unfortunately, and this is entirely avoidable and it should not happen, but again and again and again, we see cranes, all their loads, going into power lines. Now, remember, if you're going to be working near power lines, make sure you put visual ID on them Make sure you put tiger tails on there or marker balls or anything you can to make it easier. Really good idea that you lock the your slew out. Put on your limits so that you can't slew into it or you can't boom down into it. That's a very good start. But don't forget it's not just the crane. It's also the length of the load. So you might be 10 metres away from the power lines. You think you're in a safe zone. You've locked out your slew so it can't go within 10 metres but you're lifting up some 20 metre roof sheets. If that, those roof sheets spin around, then they have the possibility of hitting the power lines. Always be aware what you're lifting, how far away you are from those power lines and what effects can happen as you slew around. Because the last thing you wanna do is slew around, touch those power lines and have it go through the entire system. Now, but keep this in mind, if you do hit the power lines, Make sure that you, first thing you're going to do is warn everyone in the area, all right? Because when you hit the power lines, that electricity is going to start running through the ground. So you need to clear everyone out of the area. Get them at least eight metres away. Try to break contact. You probably won't be able to because it's going to fry all your computers. It doesn't mean that you don't try. Now, if you're stuck there on the power lines and it's buzzing away and it's buzzing away and it's buzzing away, what it... The safest thing for you to do as an operator is just stay in the cab. While you're in the cab, you're fully insulated. So long as it's safe, stay in the cab of the crane and just wait for assistance. If, however, it's not safe to stay there, so if you look up the boom and you see the big black bellowing smoke coming from the different boom sections, it's probably a good hint that your hydraulic oil is on fire. In which case, you don't want to stay in that crane. If it's not safe to stay in the crane, jump clear of the crane without touching the crane and the ground at the same time. All right, so you've got to make sure you jump clear because if you touch the crane and the ground at the same time, the electricity is going to start running through you. So jump clear of the crane, land on two feet, and you can either hop away eight metres or just keep your feet together and just shuffle them away eight metres. Now, they're the two options you're always told. Now, me personally, look, I'm getting a little bit older, not as agile as I used to be. If I was to hop that eight metres away, I'm probably more likely to be less stable and perhaps fall over, touching the ground in two spots and frying myself. So me personally, I think it would be much better just to keep my feet together and just shuffle that eight metres away. A lot less chance of things going wrong. Once you're clear, get hold of the power company. Get them to turn the power off. Let your supervisor know. Don't forget, if you do hit power lines, it is also a reportable offence. So the regulator, i.e. WorkSafe or whatever they're called in your state, you'd need to notify them as well because it is a reportable offence. Even if you got away with it, sorry, I shouldn't say get away with it, probably not the best term. Even if you touch your power lines and you manage to break contact and you think you haven't done any harm to it, 
you still need to get that crane inspected because what's going to happen is the minute you touch your power lines, that power is running through the crane. It's going to run through your rope. Now, with that power running through the rope, it's going to heat up your rope. It's going to fatigue your rope. So you'll probably be needing to replace that crane rope, regardless of whether you got away without frying all your computers and everything else as well. Now, with power lines, always have a good look around before you set up. Always be aware of them. If it looks like you could be going close to them, ideally have the power line, have the power turned off. Always better to have them isolated. If not, you can always get them insulated. Also, use a qualified spotter within those exclusion zones as well. Make sure you always know what the power line distances are in your state or territory. It does vary a little bit between them. So where you're working, make sure you're aware of those power line distances and make sure you stay away from them. Now, just while we're talking on the power lines, a couple of other things you need to be aware of with power lines is if it is a little bit windy, the wind can swing those power lines. So you're going to get that little bit of sway, which can bring them closer to your times. Weather also plays an important part when you're talking about power lines, because if it's a really muggy day, you've got a lot of moisture in the air, which means that electricity will carry through the air that little bit further than it would on a dry day, for instance. All right. So power lines, always be aware of them, and we see it way too often with cranes running into them. All right, so always keep them in the back of your mind. If you're working near them, always be aware of them. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is weather conditions. Weather conditions are one of those things that you will have a lot of arguments with over supervision, or well, with supervision, I should say. Now, number one is if there's lightning, it, look, if you can see lightning, especially if you're operating a crane with a long boom, start sucking it in. I've been on sites where they say, oh, it's 20 kilometres away. I really don't care. If I've got a 300 tonne grove with 80 metres of stick out, it's going to take me quite a while to get that stick in. So if I see it, I'm going to start sucking it in. 20 kilometres is nothing when you're talking about lightning. It can get on you pretty quick. So... Use your own discretion. I've had supervisors say things to me like, oh, it's only sheet lightning, you don't need to worry about it. What a load of crap. If you see it, pack it up. The big one you're going to always get into arguments about is wind. Now, the reason I say that, and I'll use a Tidano or a Kato, for example, they have a max wind speed limit of 10 metres a second, regardless of boom length. So... This is the old truck mounts I'm talking about, by the way. Just because the crane can operate in 10 metres a second doesn't mean you should be. If you're lifting huge roof sheets or big pieces of formwork, they're light and they've got a huge surface area. That wind is going to pick it up and use it as a big sail. So if you're saloon the crane and you're having difficulties or you see the dogman there really trying to hang on to the load it's nearly pulling him over especially if he's working at heights trying to control it pull the job up it could be at seven meters a second eight meters a second depending on the size how hard it is to control but use your um, brains if it is a hazard don't continue working if a supervisor comes up and says oh it's not 10 meters a second who cares you're the one in charge of that crane you're the one that's taking responsibility if things go wrong with it. Don't listen to what the supervisor says. Use your own judgment. If it's difficult to control, don't try to control it. Just put it down, wait for it to calm down. Now, also, when you're looking at the wind, remember, you are looking at the gusts of wind that are happening, not at the steady pace. So you could have a wind speed of constant eight meters a second and then it's gusting to 12 meters a second the gusts are what you're going to look at because they're the ones that's unpredictable and you can't see them coming you don't know when they're going to happen so that's what you've got to work off is the gusts of winds certain tasks such as working with a man box seven meters per second should be the maximum that you wind speed that you're operating with a man box as well so as a crane operator when we're talking about winds especially, you've got to use your discretion as to when it's safe and when it's not safe. Now, don't get into the mindset that, 
oh, the bloke next to me is still going, so I better keep going because otherwise I might get sacked. Think about it this way. The bloke next to you might be the one tipping his crane over and killing somebody. You don't want to be the one doing that. Regardless of what the people around you are doing, do what's best for you and your work crew and the people around you. All right. Now, the last one I'm going to talk about is my biggest bugbear. It is having cowboys in the crane. Now, if you don't understand what I mean by cowboys, I mean it's basically idiots that know what the rules are and they choose to break them. Whether that be overloading a crane, um, overreaching, it could be just not setting it up correctly, if they're in a rush, they want to do things quickly, all right? They got heavy loads on and they're trying to slew around flat out and boom flat out. Those blokes do not belong in the crane. If you're working with them, talk to somebody about them because they shouldn't be there. Remember, the crane does what you tell it to, and if you're telling it to do things that are unsafe, it's not going to do go very well for you. Cowboys will also do things like lie to the computer. It might say that it's got all the counterweight on and it's got a base plate on it might say it's got six parts of line when you've only got four parts of line don't lie to the computer just work with what you've got if you need more parts of line reeve it up if you need more counterweight ring up and get it if you've got all your counterweight and you still can't do it don't do the job get them to order a bigger crane all right that's my biggest bugbear in this is cowboys doing the job. Now, the other problem with cowboys is they can be a cowboy unintentionally. And what I mean by that is they just recently got their license and they want to rush through and get all these tickets and get in the bigger cranes and bigger cranes and bigger cranes. Don't be in a rush. Start with the small cranes, work your way up. Look, you make good money even in the small cranes. There's not that big a rush. Take your time. Learn to do it right. <clears throat> Because I'll tell you what, operating a little 16 ton or a 20 ton with a very light boom and a lot of stick out can actually be more difficult than driving a 450 tonner with a short stick and a heavy um, load because they're a lot more whippy, they're a lot more reactive than the bigger cranes. So if you actually spend some time in those smaller cranes and you really learn to control them on the slew and the luff, you'll find as you get in the bigger cranes, they'll become easier because they're more stable, they're more solid. All right, it's just the risks go up with the bigger ones because you are obviously doing bigger lifts. But spend the time and learn to do it right on the way. All right, so that's just a bit of a chat about some of the most common reasons for crane accidents here in Australia. All right, if you can think of any other really big ones that we probably should talk about, leave it in the comments section. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, especially if you want to keep updated. Right, because I want to try and keep these videos coming out because there's nothing like a bit of knowledge to keep us all aware. All right. So anything you want to know about, put it in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as well. Make sure you keep updated. All right. And thanks for your time and have a good evening.